today we're talking about basic airway management. Staying with the fundamentals. What's most important is checking your equipment. Make sure you're prepared before the emergency happens. Make sure you check your equipment in the ER, your crash cart, and your ambulance before you start your shift. Be ready to manage that airway before it becomes a problem. Let's take a look at some of the toys we use for airway management, starting with the adult bamboo bag. Hit me. The adult bamboo bag, first of all, should be a self-inflating bag. What that means is when I compress the bag and give the breath, the bag reinflates all by itself. It doesn't require oxygen to reinflate that. The mask should be clear so that we can see through it. This is if the patient starts to vomit. If it starts to vomit, we can pull the mask off and uh, go ahead and suck out the airway. The risk is that they can aspirate some of that material into their lungs. So we want to catch them as soon as they start to vomit. The Ambu bag should have a reservoir on it that collects the oxygen so that we're always administering 100% oxygen to the patient. The Ambu bag, the adult Ambu bag, should be large enough, one or two liter bag, so that when I provide the ventilations, I achieve good chest rise. And that's really what we're looking for, is good chest rise in the patient. So the bag has to be large enough to provide sufficient tidal volume to cause chest rise. Now, how are your hands placed uh, when forming that seal on the patient? Well, the guy who invented it actually was Buckwheat, the little rascals, when he went, Ote. That's your hand position. Simply open up your two fingers and make that modified C. But if you remember, Ote, you'll be Ote. Now, your thumb will go over the nose of the bridge portion of the mask. The rest of the fingers in the Ote will reach around so that you can grab that jaw and lift that jaw and then go ahead and provide uh, ventilations for your patient. Now, over bagging, bagging too fast. Bagging with too much tidal volume is also not a great thing. It's frowned upon. Why? It increases intrathoracic pressure, which can actually reduce blood return to the heart. So when we administer that breath, the time it takes to give that breath, the eye time, the inspiratory time, should be one second, which is a lot longer than we think it is, really. You know, when you give the breath, one second, one hippopotamus slower breaths and we've all seen it in codes and the guy's bagging and he's slamming air into him really fast the other problem is is that when you reach about 20 centimeters of pressure when you're in, uh, providing positive pressure ventilation that opens up the esophagus more air tends to go into the esophagus we run the risk of gastric insufflation regurgitation and subsequent aspiration so slow your bagging down in the non-intubated patient Working in a rest, if they have a return to spontaneous circulation, you should give one breath of air every five to six seconds. This is on a return to spontaneous circulation, the patient's not breathing, you're gonna give one breath every five to six seconds. Now, if you're just working a code, you're doing chest compressions, and we're bagging the patient, we're using, not, uh, they're not intubated, it's not an advanced airway, we're just bagging them, ventilations and compressions have to be synchronized. So you'll give 30 compressions, then two breaths of air. With the Ambu bag, over one second apiece. 30 compressions, two breaths, and give each breath over one second. Now once the patient's intubated, we have an endotracheal tube in, uh, compressions and ventilations can be asynchronous. They don't have to be synchronized. So once we have an advanced airway, an endotracheal tube, You'll do compressions at a rate of 100 nonstop. Keep doing your chest compressions. Then you'll provide one breath of air every six to eight seconds once the patient's intubated. Now, if you look at the guidelines, five to six, six to eight, the number that's the same in both is six seconds. So if you stick with six seconds, or remember six seconds, it'll help for your testing. Now here's another little fun tip about your Ambu bag you might not be aware of. Sometimes this little angle piece right here, in between the mask and the Ambu bag, this comes off. And sometimes it comes off and it falls underneath the CAT scan table. Most Ambu bags are designed so that the mask will still fit to the bag this way. You don't need that angle piece. And you can still ventilate the patient this way. Looks funny, but it works. I've seen plenty of uh, codes come into the ER and they were bagging this way because that angle piece fell off and slid under the cot in the ambulance. 
make sure that your bamboo bag can do that because that angle piece will fall off at the most inopportune time and wind up somewhere where you can't get to it. So make sure you can still bamboo bag your patient. And make sure you have a spare bamboo bag handy in case it doesn't. The bamboo bag. Get rid of that. Next, the oral airway. Oral airways come in all different sizes and configurations. They need to be measured for the patient before you use them. Generally, we measure from the corner of the mouth to the angle of the jaw. It's a rough guesstimate. More importantly is after the oral airway is placed, are you able to adequately ventilate the patient causing, causing chest rise? We'll see the chest coming up and down. And the object of the oral airway is to get that tongue off the back of the throat. Follows kind of an anatomic form and then it gets that tongue off the back of the throat. That's the function of the oral airway. Now, the oral airway can only be used in a fully unconscious patient. You put an oral airway into a patient that still has a gag reflex, you're going to get this. You do not want to be on the receiving end of a vomit cannon. I've seen it. I've seen it happen to people. Was it funny? Yeah. Did I laugh? Yeah. Protect yourself. Remember, if you're doing airway management, you're always going to have your BSI, your gloves, but remember face protection, a mask, goggles, protect yourself from the inevitable vomit cannon. Next, the nasal airway. Nasal airways are great for semi-conscious patients. These will be your drug overdoses, your profound alcohol intoxication, or maybe a resuscitated arrest who may have a gag, but they're still not breathing adequately enough, and we want to give them a little support to get that tongue off the back of the throat. We'll insert a nasal airway. To measure these, generally you measure from the nares to the earlobe. Again, it's a rough estimate. The true measure of any airway, whether it's oral or nasal, is are you able to adequately bag, ventilate, and oxygenate the patient after the airway's been placed. You should lube it up with a non-petroleum based gel. Surgery lube works fine. Uh, you have that in just about every drawer in the ER. So lube it up nicely and use the right nair first. Why? Statistically, your right nair is bigger than your left nair. I didn't do the study, just read about it. So try the right nair first and be gentle when inserting these. You can cause trauma. The best way to stop bleeding is direct pressure. I can't put direct pressure on the nasal turbinates if I cause bleeding back there. So be gentle. Slide it in following the contour of the airway until it rests right here at the nares. You're not going to be able to go in any further. Another nice advantage to the nasal airway is I can pass a suction tube through here and suck out the back of the airway without causing more damage to the nose. It protects the nasal turbinates as I'm doing my suctioning. So I can suction all the way back of the airway, going through the nasal airway. When placing the oral airway, first remember to measure from the corner of the mouth to the angle of the jaw. That's pretty good. Open the mouth in a scissor type motion. The oral airway will initially go in inverted. The tip toward the roof of the mouth, placing halfway in the mouth, then rotating gently and finishing the insertion. The oral airway should rest comfortably in the airway while lifting the tongue off the back of the throat. Next, apply the bamboo bag. Remember, ote. Thumb goes over the nose, reaching around, grabbing the jaw, lifting back, providing positive pressure ventilation with an eye time of one second. Go ahead, bag the patient. Yeah, you know what? I've been here since four o'clock. You, know, you think you'd have had your sh together? You know, I come here at four o'clock. There's no cameraman. You said he'd be here at four. He shows up at ten past bloody six. And you don't have the right equipment in the first place. You don't have the right monitors. I'm working. I'm trying to. I'm done. I I'm going. I'm out of here. You know, you want some amateurs? Get Brad Pitt.